so in this video we'll be learning what is a data layer now data layer is basically a javascript object that is used to pass information to tags now in javascript an object is a, a variable which has which can store multiple variables within it and uh, the data layer can be used to pass events or variables and then triggers can be made uh, triggers can be set up based on the values of the variables also it, it it stores the variables in key value pairs so for example the website title and the page url that could be one pair the user id and the transaction history that could be one pair so that's how it stores variables now you might ask yourself why why do we need a data layer so there are three simple uses for a data layer it enhances data accessibility data continuity and data consistency now we'll look into these further so firstly data accessibility now you could you could use certain javascript or css uh, values to you know set up rules or triggers for, for example if i go to preview and click connect So if I go to any event here, you could variables, you could find various uh, values, you know, and you could use these values to create, uh, to set up triggers or you could use JavaScript or CSS uh, values as well. But uh, sometimes when you don't have a defined value, what you can do is you can ask the developer to set up a condition like if you want to track the number of users that clicked a specific button you can ask the developer to set up a condition that whenever a person clicks the button the value is then uh, gone to the data layer and from there you can use that value to uh, you know set up triggers and rules so that's how data accessibility becomes easy or it enhances data accessibility like that and then moving on there's data continuity now again you had previously seen how we used uh, a css selector to to you know segregate the clicks on the first contact us button uh, with the clicks of the second contact us button i'll show you about us yeah these were the two buttons and we had gone to the inspect page and then uh, right click here copy selector yeah and then we pasted it into the trigger where click element uh, matches CSS selector this so this is how we use the CSS selector but then if a certain change occurs in the CSS part of the code like there's a change in the class name or something like that th then there's a high chance that the tag might break or the uh, the rules we had set up might crack so again to prevent all this a data layer can be used and that's how it improves data continuity so that there's no breaks or there's no cracks in the rules that we have set up and then there's data consistency as well so again when you're working with an e-commerce site suppose you have different uh, data such as there's SKUs there's product names and so on and so on so for that again you can uh, set up values in the data layer that can be consistent throughout like to all the platforms you can say send the same values a developer can uh, uh, put anything into the data layer and then those values will be same throughout so that's how it, it maintains data consistency as well you don't need to change values for different pla platforms like all the other platforms uh, will will be sent the same values so that's how uh, data layer can be used to enhance data accessibility, data continuity and data consistency as well. And building on this, the topic of data consistency, you might even ask that, uh, wouldn't this increase the dependability on the developers? But the answer is still no, because, uh, if there were no tag managers, there would be even more uh, dependability on the developers instead what this does is it still reduces uh, a lot of work that the IT team has to do because uh, as we saw data consistency once you have set up a uh, 
like you can decide upon a set of values that you know are going to be needed over and over again and then you can implement it in, into the data layer and those those values the data that will that is being sent will be consistent whether it goes to uh, google ads or facebook so you don't need to change it according to the platform it it, it has to stay the same so again it's uh, you can ask the developer to set it up for you and then and then yeah you can you can carry on with your work without any hassle and one thing to keep in mind is that uh, whenever you create a whenever you uh, set up a google tag manager account on your website uh, if you go to admin you'll notice that uh, google tag manager already creates a data data layer for your website like if you install google tag manager on your website it all automatically creates a data layer for your website so the code that we had pasted into the into our source code you can see it has a data layer and it is all automatically creating one for our website so if i were to go here and then console how to locate it i'll just type in data layer data layer and you can see that it has automatically created one for us and if i were to just type off type of data layer object so as we had previously discussed that data layer is just a javascript object that use that can be used to pass information to tags right so now in even simpler terms you can think of it as a bucket between your website and the google tag manager and data from your website site goes to the bucket first and then it goes to the google tag manager and then it is consistently going to different uh tools or different platforms right now we'll just get back here so let's just start by creating our data layer variable so you get a better idea of what we are talking about here firstly let's go to preview and yeah on our site if we go and inspect console we just clear the console and then data layer so in the data layer suppose i want to you know get the event variable so now i'll come here i'll go to variables I'll create a new variable and we'll select data layer variable and in that data layer variable name write it as event and remember that it is case sensitive and this will name it as event L and save and we have created our data layer variable so now if you were to just preview and connect Suppose if I were to scroll, click a few buttons, and go back to the summary, and suppose I go here, and under variables, you can see that the data layer variable we created by the name event DL, and you can see the return type string and value, we have fetched a value for it. So this is how a, uh, this is how you can create a data layer variable and also if there's like certain arrays like on this page if uh, we go to inspect console clear the console first and then we type data layer you would find that, that there are certain arrays right now how do we access the the variables that are inside these arrays suppose i want a uh, scroll threshold all right how would i access it now go back to my variables tab 
a new variable uh, data layer variable so uh, we said that we wanted to access the scroll threshold so we'll type scroll threshold here again it is case sensitive and then we'll see that it is under gtm it comes under gtm so what we'll do we'll type gtm dot scroll threshold right and again we'll save this as scroll threshold dl save and then if i go on preview again connect <laughs> and now if i scroll down and go back to the summary I go to scroll depth and in variables yeah we'll be able to find scroll scroll threshold data layer so again we have access the this time we have access the variable that was inside an array right now let's see uh, how and when to create a javascript variable now when you don't have you know values defined in the data layer that's when you use a javascript variable so suppose if i go on inspect here console yeah so let's say I name it a uh, digital layer and so now it's created and then if I were to push some values into it digital layer dot push And this is how I push a value into it. Now, if I were to type digital layer, it would uh, show me my name, which is the value that I have pushed into it. So, now how do you create a JavaScript variable from this? It's very simple. Go here to new variable, then JavaScript variable, and the global variable name you can get it from here. Just copy this. Control C but remember to remove the square brackets and insert a uh, period so digital layer dot zero dot name name it as js name so now if i go to the summary variables we can't see uh, the JavaScript variable that we had just created because we'll have to refresh it right so just uh, we have just created the JavaScript variable and that's why we'll have to refresh it like we'll have to clo close this and uh, create it again so inspect console clear digital layer then here dot push right now we have done it and then suppose now we just scroll scroll all further and on any new events So if I just launch preview again, connect. Now if I scroll down and go to the summary and in variables we'll be able to see the JavaScript variable name. Now you might get the undefined value because uh, it has a refresh so we'll have to create it again. Now if I just go inspect we 
clear this little Now if I click on the site and check this then you can see the JS name JavaScript variable appearing Jadev. So what we did was after launching the site we have to uh, create the digital layer again because it refreshes and disappears so you have to create it again and and af after creation of uh, the new variable any any events that are fired any clicks you make in that you will be able to uh, find the JavaScript variable that you have just created. So in this video we saw what a data layer is. It is a it is just a JavaScript object that's uh, used to pass information to tags and how it works, how it enhances data accessibility, data continuity and data consistency. Then we saw how to how to create data layer variable in Google Tag Manager and we also saw how to create it for arrays then finally we came to how to create a JavaScript variable based on the data layer that we created here right so yeah this was the this was an explanation of uh, what a data layer is so thank you for watching